Okay, hello everybody. I'm Manu Zetala from Business Finland as just sent or said there and uh, I have a quite nasty topic I hope that we are the promised land for platform economy. And why so? This presentation is first something about Finland and then something about platforms and then some heuristic or not so heuristic topics out of what can be done with this. And I'm very happy to have the presentation now because the last presentation was very good about the microservice architectures and so on because most of the ideas what we have is more or more these microservice service architectures and so on. But let's try to start with this. So it has been shown in many cases that Finland, uh, this, this is either this GDP can go up or down depending on how much platform economy is used. Some persons say that this is shit, but you can just go to press and ask about the advertisement income out of the newspapers and so on, what has been the situation there. They most probably have seen that many ads are now on these different platforms like Facebook and Google, and they are not anymore in the newspapers. So they really have lost this 30%. And if you think this 30% in a, in a way, what, is, what does it mean? If you remember, the, I think it was the first presentation in the morning with the YIT saying about these machines that crash the rock and so on. There are many business areas where the profit, the EBIT percentage is very low. It might be even 10% or maybe even lower. If you lose 30% out of the business, you are out. So you just have to think, are you in a binary way, are you binary one or binary zero? There is no other possibilities. So one or zero, which one will you be? And the winners and losers, I think many of you have already seen this slide because it is not very recent, but it is the situation that these platform business companies have been the most important, they are the most growable, they are very good in the, in the way. And I'm not going to explain this more. This is just these two slides. Are you one or zero? Are you with or without platforms? Are you winner or loser? This is kind of the motivation for this. And then about Finland. This is quite nice to show. There's this direct link to toolboxfinland.fi with this characteristic of Finland, Finnish economy, we are number one, one not number two, one not number three in almost all of the important areas. And this leads to a situation that Finland has very good possibility to be number one in platform business as well. And if you think about economy that you can trust, it's very much easier to have services in a trustworthy economy than in areas where you have to doubt if they are cheating you or not. Of course, you can have some kind of blockchain properties that you kind of promise the trust in a digital way, but anyway. So Finland is really one of the best world in the whole planet. And many of us can say that it is the best. Okay, then some words about the platforms, our business ideas there. 
So the platform economy optimizes this service production and and so it is not think that if you have a machine you have to think that this platform economy is not for us because all the machines do something and in a end case it's some kind of service what the machine makes it is something good for for persons that can can do it in in a way there so the product is meant to be used for example i have i have used many times example how about clothing as a service unfortunately now there are at least two companies that make clothing as a service so i have to think another case example but in a way, if you think, rethink a business area, what it might be, it can be totally different. For this clothing, it's quite easy to understand that I can get clothes, but what does it mean? I think very many of you have a machine for cleaning the clothing. You have a special, maybe even special room for that. You have much of space for all the clothes. What, what do you do with your uh, winter stuff in the summertime? You have to have a storage for that. What does it cost? What is the amount of the rent you pay for this space you have for this? How much you have to make your own, own work for that? Are you willing to have it or not? Is it something you are very willing to have? I just wash my clothes, it's nice. Okay, nope. I think nobody likes it. So persons are willing to pay a bit more to get it as a service. Okay, so this definition for platforms comes to the situation that it's a business or operational model. It's business model, not the clothing model, not something like that. And digital, te digital technology that creates best value for customers by offering optimal services with lowest prices and the profit is divided in a fair way to members of this value creation network. Last presentation was many microservices. How about if the microservices, all of those are generated by different companies. All microservices have different business models, but somehow, for example, based on Apicol or something like that. Think about it. It might create some new ways of doing, doing business. Okay, and in a way you have to mention that when you get the information, you have a service, you get the data out of it. And the data you can use is important because then you can have a machine learning for crushing the data. And what, the more you know, if you know that this machine that crushed the rock is only used in about, was it 20%, if I remember correct, of time, you know that it is possible to make it five times more usable. So, if you know these places where there is much business potential, you can kind of try to find the added value there. You arrange in a way that the machine is used two times more, and you take some part of the arrangement, what you arrange to the company. I think everybody is willing to have a situation where somebody offers you 20 euros, and you pay 10 euros out of that. So you get double the money you have, you invest. And if you can easily offer a service that doubles the business area, make two, double time the EBIT, make doubles everything what, what is critical there, it's quite easy to sell it. So now you have the data and you 
can be kind of own the data and use it, or it might be distributed as well. But anyway, think about this error. And if there is anything that is not fully used, there is always potential to make it much more profitable. Okay, so as I last described, we need this business model with the platforms that, with, that generates us the data, but we can use the AI to kind of make it more profitable. And it requires the business model where many members can have the winning position. If you just make a microservice, for example, time booking, I will use that later to this presentation. It's, it can be used in many, many, many different ways. And if you have a business model that every time booking is worth of one euro cent, it might be very good for your time booking system, if there are enough time reservations. Okay, but some other persons might find out that this time reservation system can be used in a other system, and they make their own business out of that, and so on. So this leads to a situation where these services are kind of built on services. There are microservices, on top of which there are microservices, and so on. Many layers out of this. All new services should be built on top of existing services, because why you make, why you reinvent the wheel? The wheel already exists. And I think you should remember the pride where something old, something new, something borrowed. And for sure, don't make any, everything from scratch. It, it is not worth of that. You should use third-party APIs as long as you can. If there are good ones, so if you can trust the player that offers the time booking service, why don't use it? Just use it, because it is, it is already there, no need to make an alter. And remember, you have to provide your added value. The most added value is the more important. If you make a short, small amount of added value, you cannot make huge profit. The added value and the profit should be somehow comparable. Because if you don't make both in enough equal, then somebody else will come to the business area and kick you out of there. And you should offer both the user interfaces Business logic, UE, the, UE, the user interfaces, API, even the whole component, the whole uh, calendar view out of the booking system should be offered to you to, and to the third party persons. So these services should be made by your partners or Sometimes even by your competitors, not only partners. And as mentioned, this security is always very critical. You should have every microservices kind of secured so that there is what, what they can do, what they are able to do. Are you or are your competitors eligible of changing some information in your system or not. And one example of this is this Mars Global WIM app. I like the presentation, what was it two or three presentations before of Mars Global? Was there that they cover, they, they have 
place in the system where there is kind of many services kind of in bottom level, taxis booking, these time planning systems and road, roads out of the trains and train tables and so on. And they collect all the information. They arrange it in a way that you can get very easily find out where you, from where you, you are going to place, from place A to place B, and it's very easy with this app. Okay, good, nice to have. But I think the most nice question is that what if somebody creates a new service that uses this WIM app? So for example, I would like to have a packet delivery service. How about business model? I just take, for example, two euros a packet if it is not very big packets. So about this size, and it's two euros to take it from Roholahti to Vallila, or for example, like that. Somebody is willing to travel from Roholahti to Vallila and use the mass and there is information that if you take the packet with you, you get one, for example, one whole day mass global time for free. Okay, you get two euros out of it. You get a bit more than one euro to the mass global, but you still have this close to one euro out of every packet. And what you do? You use everything what is there. You make just a small cover to this system for the packet transferring system. Not very much, quite easy. New business. Of course, there might be some other persons who are willing to do it in the same way. But I think that is typically in a business area. Okay, so, so let's have a, maybe a more theoretical example. Let's assume that there is a country with schools and healthcare and so on. I don't know if these kind of countries exist. <laughs> but uh, it might be that they both have IT systems there where all the information is handled and stored and all the systems have the visual view of student or patient and so on. We have this monolithic systems, for example, healthcare. I think Helsinki are just so that this EPIC system can be used as one monolithic system. But how about having this Tetris or services built on services model? What does it mean there? You can have many services, they are already built. For example, I know that they are mentioned these kind of players that have built parts there. How about just, just combining them? If they are microservice in a low level, like I mentioned this, this meeting booking system, what, does, what is the difference really between if you book a time for doctoral appointment or teacher parent appointment. Both of those have some kind of calendar view, have free times, have persons involving it and so on. Why should this service be made many times? Of course, identity services, access control, so on, they are very easy. Even this enterprise research planning and some, some kind of systems like that, they are both together. Of course, in school, they might mean a bit different than what they mean in, for example, medical place. But anyway, the information is there. And if you can use this kind of system where this 
every person is identified somehow like counter services in Finland or some, something else like that, you can use the same services and store the information only once. It makes it much, much more efficient. And of course, you need to have all services and interfaces well documented. They should have their own service level agreements. And you should remember that if you have 1,000 very important microservices with all of those has, for example, 99.9% .9 SLAs, the total SLA might be quite small. Just calculate what is 0 0.999 for 1,000. It's close to zero. So you should have it in a way that these are very reliable services. But the good thing there is that SMEs are eligible for developing their services. It's quite hard for SME to make direct competitor, for example, of this EPIC system, but this, I think, worldwide known. I think that EPIC has got, even this year, a couple of, a couple of uh, agreements that they have a good business out of Norway and other countries. They are some, some hundred thousand, or some hundred millions each. Okay, then I think that I should go to this funding part because everybody always asks about money from Business Finland. So you will get the slides, I'm quite sure, but we have, oh sorry, we have funding for small things, funding for big things, and so on. We can fund, for example, universities and so on. For example, we just last week, this is last week, Wednesday, we get the funding for this, for a piece. I think that Marko Seppänen just mentioned it in his presentation about one or two hours ago. He is here at, and we wait very much out of this because there are two universities, very good professors. I think Tommy Margo are one of the best professors in Finland about this area. And seven companies, very good companies in my honest opinion, what are there. This week we have in decision maker process more than six million euros funding. This growth engines, what I think two of those has been mentioned today here, has got 30 million euros last year, and this year another 30 million euros. You can find info of those there. Okay, and now what we are doing is that we are opening a call for applications. We are willing to have good applications what tries to find out new kind of business models, this win-win-win business model with partner network. And in the project there should be validation of the business model and it can include some service capitalization, if capitalization is correct word, but anyway you understand what I mean. It is 50% grant for this business model for SMEs and 40% for mid caps. And target of the business should be global in future. And more information will be available this week, most probably tomorrow. It should be today, but unfortunately the person who is going to put it in the net was not present today. So I hope that you join the SMA driven platform business and together we can go to the promised land. We be the number first, not zeros. Be one, not zero. Thank you.